in video number 19, we examined this rather um, simple matrix to determine its eigenvalues and uh, corresponding eigenvectors. We found out that the eigenvalues are complex and they occur as complex conjugates of one another. The eigenvector that corresponds to this eigenvalue we determine to be this. It is a complex eigenvector. Since the eigenvalues are complex conjugates of each other, when we determine the eigenvector that corresponds to this one, will it simply just be the complex conjugate of this eigenvector? That's what we'll look at here in this video. We'll actually derive this just as we derived the, exp the expression for uh, this eigenvector in the previous video. Before we do that, let's consider our problem. We have a matrix, a simple matrix, times an eigenvector, gives an eigenvalue times an eigenvector. This has this is complex, and this has complex components. So let's just take the complex conjugate of both sides of the equation. Now, our matrix, that has real numbers. So the complex conjugate of the matrix is still just A. But this will be X star, and this will be lambda star X star. And this is still now a eigenvector, eigenvalue equation, but notice what we have. We have an eigenvalue. Here is its complex conjugate. Here is its eigenvector. And here is its complex eigenvector. So we certainly suspect that when we determine our second eigenvector, it should just be the complex conjugate of the first eigenvector. That is the eigenvector that belongs to the complex conjugate of its eigenvalue. These are a complex conjugate pair. So let's see what happens. Here's our setup, just like we did in the previous video, except lambda now is lambda 2 instead of lambda 1. So we go ahead and put that into the equation. Here we have 3 minus this, 3 minus negative 1 is 3 plus 1, that's 4. Then minus negative 2i, that's 4 plus 2i. Minus 5, 4. And minus 5 minus negative 1, that's minus 4. Then minus a negative 2i, that is plus. 2i. And this times the components of our corresponding eigenvector equals 0. Of course, this is the x1 column. This is the x2 column. And We'll go ahead. It's a pretty simple setup, but we'll just go ahead with the full procedure. Write this as an augmented matrix. 4 plus 2i, 4 minus 5, minus 4 plus 2i, like this. We can divide the first row by 2 to give us 2 plus i and a 2 here. Now we want to multiply the first row by some number that will change this to a plus 5. So that when we multiply the first row by that number, whatever it is, and add it to here, that becomes 0. So we knock this out. So 2 plus i times some number we want to equal plus 5. So that number will equal 5 divided by 2 plus i. And we 
you can rationalize. Like this. 2 plus i times 2 minus i, that is 5. So this is just 1. So the number we multiply the first row by is 2 minus i, which is what we would do. Multiply the whole row by this and add it to this row to knock this out, as we do when we're trying to solve augmented matrices. So this will be row equivalent to 2 plus i, 2. 2 plus i times 2 minus i is plus 5. Add it to that, that's 0. And this will be plus 4 minus 2i. Add it to there, this is also 0. So this is our pivot column. This is the lead variable. This is the free variable. And we explained all about that back in videos number 4, 5, and 6. So of course, this corresponds to x1. This corresponds to the x2 column. So x1 is the free variable. x2 is the lead variable. And we have 2 plus i times x1 plus 2 times our free variable equals 0, or we have x1 equals minus 2 divided by 2 plus i times the free variable x2. We always express the lead variables in terms of the free variables. And again, we've discussed this at length in our earlier videos 4, 5, and 6, and also in videos 16 and 17 when we were solving other eigenvalue, eigenvector problems, the importance of the lead variable, free variable uh, concept. OK, here we can rationalize this, multiply top and bottom by 2 minus i. And this is 5. So we have x1 equals minus 2 fifths 2 minus i times x2. So this whole part here is just minus 2 fifths. So this equals minus 2 fifths. And then we had 2 minus i x2. So there's the free variable, or here's the lead variable expressed in terms of the free variable. So we go back to here. Our second eigenvector has two components, x1, that's this, and x2, which turns out to be a free variable, is just x2. So our second eigenvector x1 is minus, multiply across, we have minus 4 fifths plus 2 fifths i times x2. That's what x1 is. And then we also have x2. Two components, x1 and x2, or x21 is just a free variable. So that is our second eigenvector. We can get a better expression just by factoring this out. This will equal x2 times minus 4 fifths plus 2 fifths i. 1. So that's our second eigenvector. 
a free variable can take on any value whatsoever. So we can just use a value of 1. And then we determine that our second eigenvector indeed is just the complex conjugate of the first eigenvector. This indeed is true, so we can x this out. OK, and that's the end of the problem. So when we're dealing with matrices that have real numbers, when you encounter complex conjugates, uh, or when you encounter eigenvalues that are complex numbers, they'll be complex conjugates of each other, and their corresponding eigenvectors will be complex conjugates of one another. So as soon as you find one eigenvector, you automatically will know what the second eigenvector is. OK, um, in the next video, we're going to consider what happens when you have repeated eigenvalues, and that will take us into the concept of algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity.